So I'll give you a bit of a heads up what I'm going to talk about. It's all, uh, it's all rather boring, I'm afraid, after all the uh, discussions about use cases and applications and services. I'm going to talk largely about plastic and glass and uh, uh, being one of 160 alternative network operators out there that are uh, vying for business from uh, the likes of uh, OpenReach and TalkTalk Talk Business and others. So we're, um, we are um, an Altnet with a, with a difference. ITS Technology Group um, um, has been running for about seven or eight years now, um, and it's evolved to be um, the UK's third largest um, infrastructure provider for enterprise in, um, in many, many regions, many business areas. Um, our, I suppose the things that we do differently um, from all of the other alt-nets is that we focus specifically on enterprise and business. So our networks get built with an understanding that they are built within close proximity to dense populations of business premises, number one. That's really important for us. Number two is that um, we do not deal directly with the end customer. We're a wholesaler. So we offer a range of products and services that get consumed by um, our channel partners, of which we have in the region of 500. And those channel partners then either simply resell the services that we provide or they'll consume them and then they'll add value to them. So we, we have different types of, of, of channel partner. Um, our networks are designed and built to um, a standard. Um, our networks also are largely built with an existing open reach infrastructure. So um, we, we, we aim not to disrupt, we aim to build quickly and we aim to build in a cost effective way. Um, our networks run past, as we said, um, high densities of, of business premises, but we also build those networks with um, a significant number of breakout points so that it's easy to break out from the fibre spine and then connect to the building, or, um, as we've been finding more recently, to things. So our infrastructure is, has a significant part to play in everything that we were talking about earlier. Um, it not only connects business premises and provides um, 100 meg access to the internet for certain businesses, but it also connects lampposts, it also connects CCTV columns, it also connects small cells. So providing the, the fibre with that context is really, really important. And I think if we, if we don't, if the industry doesn't move in that direction, all that fibre that, 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 that John spoke about earlier lays there dormant. You've got to put it into the ground with the, with the intention of using it in a specific way. Put it in context, make it connect those things that need to be connected, enable that 5G vision to be to be realised. At the moment, it's kind of not right. It's not in the right places. It's not offered in the right way. So we kind of focus our products and services towards um, where, they'll, where, they'll, where they'll add the most significant value. Um, and that means, in some cases, sort of giving up on, on some of the value you'd normally expect to get by providing, I don't know, 100 meg Ethernet service. Because ultimately, a 100, 100 meg Ethernet service is delivered over a fibre. But if the, if the end customer, i.e. a mobile operator, is demanding a dark fibre, give them the dark fibre. And just accept that that is the right product for that application. Don't try and hold on to it and say, you need a 200, 300, 400, 500 meg service at this price. Because if you do that, then you hold back the, the development of 5G and, 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 and um, densification. So, um, our, so we're, we're a wholesaler. Um, we use open reach infrastructure, so we're, we're minimally, minimally disruptive, and um, we focus on enterprise. We've, got, um, we've actually managed to secure 100 million pounds worth of um, a second fund investment in the last couple of weeks, which is, pretty significant. Um, when you consider the, the majority of the other all nets that are out there at the moment are really struggling to um, actually fulfil their promise to their existing investors and as a result of that are um, ultimately facing pressure from, from those investors. Uh, we've managed to demonstrate that our model is not only sustainable but it's also um, a growth model as well and we've secured um, from Aviva, initial funding, but most recently, Avenue Capital of another £100 million. And that gives us the opportunities to go, go on and continue to grow our business. So along the journey that we've been on, there have been some fairly significant uh, developments. Our, 
our infrastructure quite often gets built to not only address our own business needs, but also the needs of um, local authorities, government bodies. So we build, um, we, we help those government bodies secure funding. And with that funding, we will build out fibre networks that connect libraries, GP surgeries, and so forth. But whilst we're doing that, we also look at businesses in the area. So we're not, we're not taking government funding and building something which is effectively a closed network and, and just meets the requirement of, um, of um, a, a particular government body. We're building a network which will not only meet that specific requirement, but it will also um, provide, provide us with an opportunity to leverage it and then sell services into the businesses in the areas that we pass. Um, and we've, we've built some fairly significant networks on the back of that, on that um, premise. One of them... One of them was the, um, the Liverpool Connect uh, network, which is a venture, a joint venture between the um, LCR region. It's, it's a combined local authority entity um, and a partner, a build partner. And ultimately that, that network not only delivers against the requirements of the Liverpool region, but it also delivers against our requirements as a business. Um, more recently, we've entered into another joint venture with, um, the Lund uh, for the Royal Borough of Greenwich, with a similar aspiration of enabling them to do the things that they need to do. Um, in some cases, social housing is, is, is part of the solution. In some cases, um, we are connecting up um, new business hubs um, and also picking up new business along the way. So it's, it's quite a journey that we've been on as a business. Uh, we're about 220 strong. We started with about 30 people back in the day. Um, it's kind of a, a, a typical kind of evolution. And, and we've, been, we've been fortunate in that we've had a good investor along the way. Um, so we, we think that where we stand at the moment, in terms of the builds that we've done, that about 25% of the UK's business premises are on net for us which doesn't mean to say we've built a huge amount of fibre, it just means that we've deployed it in the right places for, for that particular context. So the, the, Liverpool, Connect, the Liverpool Connect region network um, covers a, a, a really wide area of, um, of um, the Liverpool combined authority region. And um, I can't say that's been easy. Um, when you're dealing with a local authority, it's quite challenging. When you're dealing with a combined authority, it can be even more challenging. Um, but ultimately, as long as, as, long as there is a, a, a point of empowerment, a single point that you can, you can ultimately gravitate towards, then, then things get done. And this network has been used to deliver a whole load of um, use cases in healthcare. So we've got some very passionate uh, people who work for the, uh, the Liverpool Connect region, and they, they, they've taken 5G testbed connectivity, and we've underpinned the 5G testbed connectivity, um, and they've taken that capability to, um, uh, to uh, make end-of-life care more effective uh, and more, um, uh, it's difficult to say how you deal with it, but it's, it's made it a better, a better service that they've been able to provide, and, and I'm quite proud of, of, of being part of that. So our business kind of looks like that. It's a, it's a lot of networks um, um, spread around the country. And these networks, they, they kind of look a bit like that. Um, so as a, as, a, as a very old telecoms person, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a view of, of what that kind of looks like. Because it's down there, right? It's, it's, it's under the ground, but we don't really know much about it. Um, we, we use a, a technology... Uh, called XGS PON, Passive Optical Networking. And that enables us to uh, get the most out of each indiv individual fibre that, that we, we put in the ground. Um, it's pretty smart technology, um, but the fibre infrastructure that we deploy is, is based on uh, a fibre leaving a data centre or an exchange and being split many times over. So ultimately, a single fibre leaves, it gets split, eight times, it gets split another eight times. So ultimately, a single fibre from the exchange or the data centre could be serving many customers. Um, and that's a really efficient use of fibre, and it's harnessing the power of the technology we spoke about earlier. So we use, um, or, that, or the technology makes good use of wave division multiplexing, i.e. different light waves for specific end customers, and also time division multiplexing. All these techniques that you find in, in, in mobile networks and in historic uh, copper-based networks are just being redeployed. And that's nothing new. Everything, everything kind of cycles through. And in fact, um, a, 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 um, a light wave 
which travels down these fibres, is an electromagnetic wave. So it's kind of the same as all the stuff that we used to do with copper. Um, but as you can see, we've kind of moved on a little bit. But I'm, I'm not convinced that, that this is moving on. So this is, this is a, a telegraph pole, and it's got uh, one Altnet's fibre equipment on it. It's got the remains of a BT uh, copper deployment. And very soon, there'll be another Altnet with another fibre deployment on the top of that telegraph pole. So you kind of question, perhaps the industry should have been a bit more consolidated, a bit more focused, not to overbuild. Um, I hasten to add that's not something that ITS would do. So we deliberately avoid going into, into areas which are already, already built and well served. Um, telephone exchanges, which is kind of where I started my career, were basically the hub of, of the communications network. They, they were, that was where all of the copper came together. Um, nothing's really changed. It's just that they've been replaced by data centers. Um, and data centers um, kind of for, perform a very similar function in that they are, uh, it's a data exchange rather than a telephone exchange. And of course, they are gateways to the internet in much the same way that telephone exchanges provided you gateways to international direct dialing. And so nothing's really changed significantly. We, we recently put all of this to, to good use um, by um, basically delivering all of the communications for Eurovision. Um, it's a bit of a high wire act, this one. Um, it can't fail. And um, it was predicated largely on a relationship with um, LCR, Liverpool Connect region. Uh, we'd already deployed infrastructure across the region. Um, and the um, ACC arena was pretty much in the middle of that infrastructure. So um, we, we got the challenge to deploy our, our network and our infrastructure, or adapt our network and infrastructure to make it work in, in, in this context. So effectively, the, uh, the arena is served by two diverse points of presence. So we're not risking the failure of a single point of presence. These are um, individual telephone exchanges. So we, we deploy our XGS PON equipment largely in telephone exchanges. But with the exchange closure program, we're now going to look at deploying that technology in data centers. So multiple fibers, multiple gigabits between those points of presence. Um, working very closely with NTT as a partner to uh, protect against malicious attacks, which is kind of important in that the, the eyes of the world are upon you. Um, we also um, had multiple connections to our core network. So we're a bit unlike, we're, we're unlike really, I suppose, a, a traditional net in that we've built a big MPLS core network to carry all of the traffic that is generated from those individual networks that you saw earlier. So we're, we're more than, we're not really an open reach. We're actually a bit like a, a big carrier, but we're relatively small at the moment. Um, so this, the, the, the key here, I think, is that this was done in three months. And, it was, and we were heavily dependent on other parties working together with us with that, that sort of passion to try and deliver against a, an ultimate end game. And I think that's where, you see, that's where you see individuals, parties working in collaboration. When you've got this thing that cannot fail, then ultimately everyone is incentivized to pull together and make it happen. And it happened. I, mean, I, I didn't watch it, but I'm sure many did. <laughs> so um, our platforms... Um, not only supported the, um, the various broadcasting platforms, uh, again, via our core network, uh, but they also um, supported all of the in-building Wi-Fi and um, handled the Eurovision voting system as well. So it was a great journey. It was, it was um, very, very nerve-wracking, um, but it worked, which was the most important thing. We weren't in the, uh, in the spotlight for anything other than the right reasons. So working, as I do in, and have done for a long time in telecoms, you're always kind of looking for what, what's the next thing, what's going to make a difference. Um, and this is slightly a random, a bit of a random slide, but um, I think we've all been looking at um, edge compute and what that means um, and how that pans out. And um, when I worked with uh, a colleague of mine back there from BT, we got quite heavily involved in uh, a project 
in, uh, in Manchester where we work with um, AWS and we work with obviously EE and we deployed a 5G edge compute node in a telephone exchange and alongside it was the full um, Amazon Web Service stack. So the two are actually co-located right at the edge of the network, not in the core, not connected via the internet, but the processing and storage of that AWS stack sit right alongside the mobile edge compute element of the 5G network. So all the processing happens there. And the, the use case for that, which I suspect there are many other use cases as well, but the use case for that, for that was where um, um, the police force were equipped with um, body-worn cameras. They were connected via the 5G network. And um, if they approached somebody, facial rec recognition would kick in. The compute would then say, um, this person is known to us. He may have a knife. Beware. And that, that happens without having to go all the way back to the internet where the core, or across the core network where that information is held and potentially delayed and not processed as quickly. That happens right at the edge. And that is an, an immediate kind of um, decision uh, that is, is kind of presented to the, 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 uh, the user. And I think, I think edge compute is definitely something that, that we, need to, we need to prepare for, understand more about. We work quite closely with data center operators um, and more and more data center operators are buying up um, single-use data centers that are sort of out of town and much closer to relatively dense populations. And um, they set themselves up as edge compute service providers. There's one data center operator which has just been bought called Proximity. The, the kind of clues in the name, proximity data centers are, are kind of entitled edge one, edge two, edge three, edge four, and they've just been bought. So maybe they've probably got something right. So there was a, a bit of a kind of a, a, a run through the life of, a, of a, um, an alternate ISP. Um, plastic and glass is kind of what we do, but it's, it's essential. Without it, um, the 5G networks don't run. The broadband services don't operate. Um, and all of those things that we spoke about earlier um, will not be delivered. And, and the key really is just delivering that fiber in, the, in, a, in a context, and that's a commercially and technically viable way that underpins the business case and the technology of the service providers that sit above it. Okay. Thank you.